Belinda Gay Blainer was a 33-year-old from Arnold, Pennsylvania. She had several brothers and sisters, but had lived a tough life. In the early morning of June 21st, 1996, Belinda walked out of her apartment to buy beer down the street. Witnesses saw her at a local bar, then Belinda left. She was never seen again. I'm Ed Denzel, and this is Unfound. Going back to my earliest memories of growing up in Leechburg, Pennsylvania, I can remember in the late 70s, my dad, my grandfather on my mother's side, my uncle, and others talk about this place that wasn't far away, only like 20 minutes by car. They spoke of it in scary terms. That is where the mob lives. That often people went there and never came back that it was best that when I became an adult, to just avoid it. Then when the 1980s rolled around, and I could drive, the reputation of this place was still bad, but it had changed. The mob had moved out, but the drug dealers and crime had moved in. This was exacerbated by the steel mills in the area going under, causing desperation and decay. And, I have to be honest, living in western Pennsylvania until 1998, I bet I only visited that little city a couple of times, because its reputation stuck with me. Well, today, with the disappearance of Belinda Blainer, we're going to that place, Arnold, Pennsylvania. Population 4,800, although in the 1950s it was double that. Let me tell you. It's one rough town. And now a summary of the case. This is brought to you by my friend Megan Lyonez's website, charlieproject.org. Belinda Blainer had a tough life, virtually from the day she was born. Her mother, according to Belinda's siblings, was not what you might call mother material. Belinda and the other children went back and forth to foster families, with these people treating the kids better than their biological parents. Belinda dropped out of school around 10th grade, leading her to work the streets of her neighborhood for the next 15 years. However, she did live with a man all that time, and they seemed to get along well. So, just after midnight of June 21st, 1996, Belinda left her apartment to go out to get beer at a local bar, Orpies. It was a short walk. She should have returned in 15 minutes. Witnesses, if we are to believe them, saw her at that bar, then at another. There were no reports of any problems or incidents. Yet, after the second stop, Belinda did not come home. She was never seen again. The man in her life, Keith, filed a missing persons report mid-morning of that day. Searches were done at the apartment and elsewhere. Nothing was found. In covering the disappearances of women whose profession was sex work, it's kind of a mixed bag for unfound. In a couple, the men who were these women's boyfriends slash pimps are the best suspects. In the others, some of the women didn't have pimps at all. For the audience, you'll have to decide what you believe is the best theory for Belinda's disappearance as you try to answer these three questions. Number one, are we sure the witnesses got the date correct? when saying they saw Belinda during that early morning. Number two, 
if Belinda was abducted, why aren't more women like her missing from that area? And number three, could the entire key to this case be an unsolved murder that occurred in 1993, three years before Belinda went missing? Belinda's family certainly believes someone murdered her, although they are unsure who the person is. The guest for this episode is Belinda's sister, Robin Antonica. Unfound News This will be the last new disappearance covered on Unfound for 2021. Next week, we'll be revisiting a case with new commentary already covered in 2017. Which one? You'll know in a few days. Let's just say it's one similar to Belinda's. Then for the last Friday of 2021, you will get to hear update episode number 10. Next, I'm very happy to report that for 2022, Dr. Telesco and I will be getting together once a month for her YouTube show, just like we've been doing since May of 2020. This will start in either January or February. In addition, I have been invited back to Nova Southeastern University to speak during the spring semester. How cool is that? Finally, I don't want to jinx it, but I may have something special planned for the YouTube channel for an event somewhere around New Year's. Still working on the details, but I am sure you will enjoy it. Where you can find Unfound. Unfound supports accounts on iTunes, Pandora, Audible, Podomatic, Spotify, iHeart, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Deezer, and YouTube. Speaking of YouTube, on Wednesday nights at 9 p.m. Eastern, please join us for the Unfound live show. Watch, ask questions, and give the show a thumbs up. Contribute to Unfound at patreon.com forward slash unfound podcast. You can also contribute at PayPal, paypal.me forward slash unfound podcast. I also need to give a huge shout out to all the people who have monetarily contributed using Super Chat during the live show on Wednesday nights. Thank you for watching and thank you for donating. The email address, unfoundpodcast at gmail.com. Merchandise, the books at amazon.com in both ebook and print form. Do not forget the reviews. Shirts at unfound podcast.myshopify.com, or you can track down my assistant Heather in the Facebook group. Playing cards at makeplayingcards.com forward slash sell forward slash unfound podcast. The website, theunfoundpodcast.com, and please mention Unfound at all true crime websites and forums. Thank you. I'm so happy to have on this episode of Unfound the sister of Belinda Blainer, Robin Antonica. Robin, welcome to Unfound. Thank you. Now, Thanks for having me. Uh, thank you for being on the program, Robin. Thank you. Uh, I was going to say, Robin, that um, you and I had discovered that um, I went to college with what? Who? Your niece, is it? My husband's niece. Your yes. husband's niece. I went to school with your husband's niece at Grove City um, yes. because, of course, Antonique is a very, I think, un uh, unique name. And That's right. uh, going way back to the early 90s, uh, your, uh, your husband's niece and myself. Uh, we're in the same class. I think we graduated even the same year as 1993. So what a coincidence, right, right Robin? Yes, it is. <laughs> so this it's also just, world. it is a small world, and this just shows uh, uh, how close Arnold, that whole entire area, is to where I grew up in Leechburg. So, Great. Robin, thank you for being on the program. Thank you. Let's start here. Um Let's talk a little bit about your family. Of course, Belinda is your sister. Maybe let's start there. Older or younger sister? She's the baby of the family. Um, I have two uh, 
half brothers and one half sister, and one real sister, and Belinda is my baby sister. Wow, and uh, how much younger is she than you? Three years. Oh, well, three years. So you're kind of close. Yeah. Kind of close. You know, you're uh, 15, she would have been 12. You're 17, she would have been 14 going back uh, to that time. Um, how would you say uh, everybody got along? It's quite a few siblings. How did everybody get along? Well, um, as we were growing up, uh, we all, uh, well, I had a really strict mother. Mm -hmm. And uh, she, uh, um, well, how do I go to do this? Um <laughs> We, well, we just like to keep it simple here, Robin. How did everybody get along? How did all the siblings get along? We got along real well. All of us. Yeah, there was not too many uh, mm. disagreements. We mm. had to get along, you know? That's mm. what we played with, was all of us, you know? Yeah. And, of course, you said some of those were half-siblings. So uh, this was uh, uh, siblings from a different father or a different mother? Different fathers. Different fathers. Okay. And did you all grow up together? We did. Wow. Um, ever since my brother, my oldest brother was, I think, five. No, let's make it six because mm -hmm. six. Uh, Richard was five. Lori mm -hmm. was four. I was three. Sandy was two. And Belinda was one. Wow. Just, yeah, we were all real close. Okay. All right, so uh, three years difference between you and Belinda. Would you say that um, uh, you have had much in common? You know, three years, you know, maybe uh, 13 and 10, that's a big difference. But once you get to 17 and 14, maybe that's not so much of a difference. Would you say that you were closer to her than your other siblings? How would you explain it? No, I was not closer with Belinda than the other. Uh, hmm. My sister Andy and I were the closest, hmm. and Lori... Linda, we're close. Uh, I don't know why that came about or how mm -hmm. it came about because uh, they shared a room together. That's probably more likely why. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. That's yeah. Okay. Uh, would you say that Belinda and yourself, uh, similar personalities, outgoing, uh, introverted? Yes. What would you say? We were really outgoing. She's a lot like me. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's talk about her uh, a little bit more. So we have all these siblings. Uh, you're separated by three years. You admit that uh, maybe you were closer to one of your other sisters in contrast to Belinda. Maybe that's due to age or, like you said, uh, growing up in different rooms in the house, sharing rooms, sharing things. That certainly could have an effect there. But when you sp uh, think of Belinda going back to those maybe early days, 10 to 12, into the teen years, what are some of the things you think about uh, regarding her interests, hobby, hobbies, uh, personality? How would you explain Belinda? Um, she, we just did a lot of things together. I mean, because that's who we had. We used to go roller skating together, uh, 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 ride our bikes together. We all all did that together. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was, you know, we were out playing together. When we all went out, we all had to go out, you know what I mean? Yeah. So we all stuck together in our little group in our house, in our yard, and, you know, that's that's how we stuck together. Yeah. But we did, you know, like kids normally do together. I mean, we always stuck together doing, mm -hmm. playing in the basement, cold snow, and, you know, yeah. everything. We ever, just do everything together yeah. growing up. When you say yeah. roller skating, uh, this is going to show uh, how close uh, you know I used to live. Did you go down to the Cheswick? Um, no, we very no. seldom we went to Cheswick. We used to go to Melwood. Oh, Melwood, <laughs> right? Melwood, right there by Lower Burl, of course. Yeah. How can yeah, I forget we, about the Melwood, where they also have the, had the pool there too? Yes, that's what we did in the summer. Go to swimming yes, in the summer and skating yes. in the winter. Yeah. yeah, that's not that far. It's like only 10 minutes from Arnold or something like that. Of course, I should have thought well, of that we first. In, we grew up in New Kensington. Yeah, New Kensington. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so not far at all. Right, of course, Melwood. I should have known that. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, what was she into? Uh, was she into arts or sports or 
what was uh, Belinda, some of the things that uh, she had an interest in uh, going back to being a kid? I don't, I don't remember mm -hmm. a lot about what they did because up until we, I was in eighth grade, we were always taken to our foster family and it oh. uh, ended up being our godparents growing up. Mm -hmm. And Lloyd, Linda, and Richard always went together. So they're, they're the one that spent the most time together. Oh, wow. My sister, Sandy, I, and my other brother, uh, we spent time together with their, the sister of the foster family that took us. Huh. Wow, so okay. That, that was a, that's why I don't have a lot of uh, other memories about Belinda that's because okay. I, I wasn't there to share them with them, you know? Yeah. But because um, my mother separated us, well, had us taken away when we were kids, and uh, my foster parents became our godparents. And every mm -hmm. summer we used to go there, but they used to take us and, and play together all the time, you know, mm -hmm. they, and all that stuff, you know. They made sure that we knew each other and were together with each other all the yeah. time, you know. That sounds, yeah. uh, it sounds very complicated and complex, especially to kids, you know, maybe they don't understand all these things. Is that how right. is that how you would have thought about it? Yes, it was very complicated because I didn't I didn't have a normal growing up life like normal mm -hmm. children do with their brothers and sisters. Right. You know? Right. Only and we spent together was I mean because in, in school I mean she was in a totally different grade and uh, like my older sister Lori. Her and I were in the same grade, and my sister Sandy, we all went to school together. Belinda was always behind. So, mm -hmm. you know, it was she was the baby, and that's how it was. She was the baby, yeah. you know? Right. <laughs> right. Yeah, that had some, it sounds very complex, and, and but at least you knew who she was, right? You at least uh, got together oh, with her, you know, many, many times, even though it's sometimes you were being separated. Yes, lots of times we did spend together. Yeah, good. Yeah. Did you all go to the same school? Did you go to uh, Valley? Yes, uh, Belinda, I don't remember her going to 10th grade. I think she quit in 10th grade, mm -hmm. uh, and that would have been the beginning of Valley. But mm -hmm. uh, we all did go to Martin School, elementary school together, so we all did walk home together and, you know, um, mm -hmm. but she was, since I'm, like I'm saying, like junior high, we were already out of junior high when she started junior high, right. you know. When we started high school, she just started junior high school, you right. know, so that was a big change there also. Right. You know. Yes, of course. Of course. Yeah. Do you think that uh, you said that she dropped out around 10th grade? Do you think uh, a big factor of that was this very uh, complicated childhood that you all had? Oh, pro oh, most likely. She couldn't. Nobody. <laughs> A lot of my brothers and sisters couldn't stand my mother, so they mm -hmm. couldn't wait to get out of the house, you know? Yeah, okay. I'm sorry to hear yeah. that. Okay. okay. Uh, what did she do, if you, you can remember, what did she do once uh, she, you know, she dropped out? Uh, what did she do? She went to live with my sister, Lori, the oldest sister. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And I was still in school. Uh, no, I just graduated, so I was working. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, Belinda was doing her thing with my older sister, because mm -hmm. she ended up leaving and quitting school, too. Lori yeah. did? Yes, Laura quit oh. school. Okay. Okay, so where where did uh, Lori, uh, Laura and uh, Belinda live, in contrast to where, where you were living at the time? They lived um, near the junior high school, uh, up in that area. Mm -hmm. Um but uh, I was already in high school, or out of school, so I didn't, uh, um, I had a job and everything, so mm -hmm. I didn't spend a lot of time there either, you know. Okay. I, I started doing my own thing also. Okay, gotcha. That, that's where she started doing her thing, the wildlife, okay. you know. Well, it's uh, being that, of course... You know, quitting school, you know, around 10th grade, that's 15 or 16 years old. And, uh, you know, it's a very, you know, just can't move on to moving right into the workforce at 15, 16 years old. So, yes, it would get complicated even more so very, very quickly. Um, all right, so let's move on to uh, something you brought up. You brought up uh, the wildlife. So let's talk about... Uh, you know, these issues. We're going to be talking about this guy later in the conversation, but 
Uh, who uh, is Keith Turner? How did he and Belinda meet? Uh, why don't you tell the listeners, just in general, uh, what you, kn- you knew about him at the time? Uh, did you ever meet him? Things like that. I didn't know him at first at all. Um, it was several years later after they were together, and they ended up moving in together, I guess. And uh, in that couple of years, I really didn't see her much because of what they were doing. You know, I was mm. not in the situation. Yeah. And um, I was living my own life, and Belinda and Lori were doing their thing. Now, my sister Lori was doing the same thing, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, my sister was pregnant with uh, Christopher, her baby, her, her little boy. And uh, I did go and get Christopher all the time to get him into my world instead of trying to have him into their world, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, I used to take him all the time and spend time with him and my baby. And that was years later. Um, I'm saying three years, four years later, yeah, that mm. I finally started, you know, hanging out with my other sister again and you know yeah mm-hmm. and Belinda, Belinda was still doing her her thing Belinda and Keith I, I don't know when they actually met and how they met um I figured it probably was at a bar you know mm-hmm. um uh, the Rainbow Inn used to be down on 4th Avenue and I know that she used to go there a lot um and I and I really I, I figured that's how she met Keith, was at a bar, you okay. know? And, and we have to be clear about something. At the time of her disappearance in 1996, they had known each other for many years. Yes, yeah, 17 years they wow. were together. Since 1979? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay, and we have to remember that uh, she was only 29, so you're thinking that they met when she was 12? She disappeared when she was 33. 33. She did. 33. Oh, okay, she so... Been, right. But she did speak on what date? June... Uh, June 21st. Yeah, she just turned... Uh, she just turned 33. All right, so some of those... Uh, the information out there is wrong then. I see a lot of places that she's 29. You're saying she was 33. She was 33. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's why we do these uh, interviews to correct information like this. So she was just turned 33... And so yep. she would have been uh, 13, uh, 16 when she met Keith. Yes. Yep. Okay. Uh, but we're not sure how uh, they met somewhere, just hanging out, like you said, maybe going to bar. But 17 years, that's a long time. That would even be a long time for a marriage. But they weren't yes. married. But would you say, once again, I realize you were not around there much, would you say that they lived together that entire time, most of that time? Yes, they did. Okay. Yes, they did. Okay. I do know that. When I was married and she, we used to go pick her up or take her mm-hmm. home uh, from our get-togethers or Easter's and Christmas and all that. Yes, they, they were together, even if it was at a hotel room uh, mm-hmm. in, in a, a apartment that had no heat or running water. Or, you know, that's the way Belinda lived, you know. Okay. But, yeah, they were always together. Okay. And I, and Keith was quite a bit older than she was, right? Yes. All right. In fact, he, uh, of course, if she, 33, it's been 25 years, so she would be 68 now. Uh, but he was already, what, it, late 40s or something like that? He'd be 58. She'd be 58. She'd be 58. Right. That's right. 58. I can't do the math. 58. But he would, he's in his 70s now. Yes. Okay. All right, so quite a bit older than she is. Uh, when you would meet Keith, any particular um, opinion on him? No, he was very kind to us. I mean, he wasn't mean or nasty or anything ever that mm-hmm. I know of. That I can't remember a, a, a bad word ever coming out of his mouth. Okay. You know, I would, don't uh, suspect that he did something to Belinda, you know, because... I know he did love her, and he was with her all those years. And I never saw him raise a hand to her or raise his voice to her. So, uh, did he have a job? No. He didn't? No. So what did they, uh, what did the two of them do for money and things? They were on welfare, and she went and, uh, did 
uh, the professional life, I guess. All right. She was a, she was a sex worker. Yes. A prostitute. Okay. Do you remember the first time you maybe suspected or you know found out for sure that she was doing that? Uh, no, I don't remember any of that. No, I really don't. You no. did, but I know for a fact that, that that's. I think mm. Lori got her into doing that, mm. and that was probably years before, you know. Mm -hmm. when did it you, went up would you say? Out. Would you say that uh, you knew before she went missing? Oh yeah, I you did knew. know that. Okay. That what she was? Yes. Okay. Oh yeah, years. That she was doing her thing like that. Okay. Uh, obviously, you uh, took a different path than your two sisters did. Did you ever have an opportunity, being that you were all sisters when you did run into each other, ever uh, discuss this, ever talk to Belinda about it? Hey, you know, Belinda, you know, you shouldn't be doing this. Did that ever come up? Oh, yeah. But uh, here, when she went disappear and, and disappeared, um, I went on the street myself and tried to find her mm. just to see what... And I got mm -hmm. myself caught up into that world also. And, uh, yeah. Wow. And up okay. until, like, 2000. Yeah, I, okay. I was walking to just, well, I first did it just to find her. Yeah. You know, for years. And, uh, yeah, and I got caught up in it also. But, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. It's not me. About All right, well, I appreciate you being transparent and, and forthright uh, about that, uh, Robin. Thank you for... Uh, hey. Um, telling us that. I was not aware of that. And listeners should know I was not aware of that until she just said that. So I appreciate you being, um, you know, revealing that. Uh, you didn't have to, but uh, that's the. But that's what somebody will do, right? When you want to find your sister, you'll do those things, right? Yeah, you put I your, did. Yeah, put yourself at risk just to find out what happened to your sister. Yes, I did. Okay. And I, I, I'll tell you what, it was the most scariest thing I've ever done. Yeah. You know? Of course, I'm sure. I'm sure. Uh, I'm guessing that with uh, Belinda, that with the work that she was doing, being out there uh, in the New Ken Arnold area, maybe even elsewhere, that she had also had an, uh, addictions as well, or not? She, she did so. She did. Yeah. Okay. Yes. All right. So she's living a, living a rough life. What about Keith? I mean. You know, they're they're a couple. They're li you know, what role did he play? Once again, looking back at it now, what role did he play in the choices that Belinda was making? He was going right along with her. Yes, he just did exactly what she was doing. I mean, he wasn't out on the street getting mm. women and all that stuff, mm. but uh, he, he got her out there and and her doing her drugs and taking it back home and the beer and the liquor and. Whatever mm -hmm. it was, and she was taking it right back to the house to do it with him. Okay. Yep. Okay, but we should be clear, as you stated earlier. Uh, I'm I'm guessing you didn't you weren't around them much, but you never saw Keith do anything violent to Belinda or had arguments, anything like that. No. Okay. No. Okay. No, I mean, and she came to our parties and stuff. She'd always make sure that. She had a plate of food to take home to him, you know. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, not, so he didn't go hungry. All right, and how how many years, roughly, would you say that, uh, of course, I, she was doing this right up to her disappearance. How many years would you say that she was doing this in the Arnold area? 16 to 33. Wow. So, okay. yeah, a long time. Okay. Would you oh, say that she had a lot of uh, run-ins with the police over that time? I think so. Okay. I don't know how many because I know uh, yeah. I, I'm not say that. <laughs> okay. Uh, would you say that you ever spent any time in jail? I think she did one time. Just once. once. Okay. Yeah. All right, so this is how she's living her life. Uh, uh, very, of course, we all know, very dangerous, not just in 1980s and 1990s, but right up here to 2021. It's, um, yeah, and all what she was doing, yeah. you know. So, and back then they were pretty crooked, as I should say, you mm -hmm. know. And they all knew what she was doing, yeah. you know. That's how I'll put it. They all knew what she was doing. 
We're going to move on to something else, though, that has popped up with Belinda's disappearance. And once again, I realize you are not an expert on this. Um, it's a mur an actual murder, but maybe you, being that you lived in the area at the time, I lived in the area at the time, and I even remember this happening, but, um, uh, you know, I, I've i kind of brushed up on it since, but uh, Robin, let's now talk about the 1993 murder of Stephanie Coyle, C-O-Y-L-E, and what do you know about it? What is just the general facts of her murder? And then we'll talk about Belinda's maybe possible relationship to it. All I know is the lady got <clears throat> murdered up ago. I didn't know a lot of other details until I talked mm. to you and Tracy. Mm. And, um, okay. Uh, but I really didn't know much about it until Belinda just mentioned to me one time that, uh, after the lady was murdered and I went down there and I was getting really bad into the drugs myself. So I was staying with Belinda a week before I went to Hawaii and, and that's the week after mm. that I disappeared. Yeah. But, um, and then, uh, she, uh, told me that she already told the police that, uh, she saw somebody coming out of this house. That wow. The murder that murdered, you know, somebody coming out of the coil house. And mm -hmm. she was going to go, the police were going to go have her, I, I don't know if it was to go uh, identify the man, mm -hmm. the persons that did it, or what, because I ended up leaving myself here. Okay. So, okay. But uh, all I did, please. Please, if you're going to continue. I said, I'm, that's all I really knew about the murder itself. Okay. You know? Uh, let me then just uh, tell the listeners that Stephanie Coyle was an older woman, uh, much older than uh, Belinda, and she had gone to bingo, and uh, she'd come home. Uh, she, I guess she had won some money at bingo, and had come home there in the Arnold area, and somebody, whether it was a break-in or she opened the door for this person, I'm not sure, but somebody went in and stabbed her to death, and she was an older woman. And this is a murder that is still unsolved 28 years later. But we should, um, of course, remember 1993, of course, Belinda went missing in 1996. So Belinda goes missing three years after Stephanie Coyle is murdered. But what you are saying here, Robin, is that right before Belinda went missing in 1996, she was telling you that she thought she knew something about that murder. Exactly. Okay, and her intention, your understanding, of course, we're going to talk about where you were at the time of her disappearance, but your understanding at the time was that she was going to go to the police and say, you know what, I think I, now that I'm thinking back on it, I think I know who caused this murder. I don't know how she went about it, but mm -hmm. uh, this for me is, uh, Robin, I'm, I've already, I'm going to meet with the police and the, and, uh, tell the police that I saw, or I've already saw, the, the person that came out of the court of murder house. Wow. Okay. That is uh, certainly considerable information, but I want to remind the listeners, Stephanie Coyle's murder is still unsolved 28 right. years later, but I, I've had a chance to brush up on it. I've, I remember it happening, living in Leechburg at the time. Uh, I would have been 22, 23 at the time. Arnold's very close to Leechburg. And so I kind of remember it. Uh, I should ask you, Robin, when Stephanie Coyle was murdered in 1993, was that even something that was on your radar? Did you just or just read it in the paper? Was that even something that was on your mind at that time? Did you realize it happened? Not really. I After okay. I saw the flyers all over Arnold, and there's still flyers all over Arnold, New Kensington, yeah. about... Yeah. Okay. And, um... Yeah, and that's the only reason why I, I asked her, and she mentioned that to me when I talked to her about that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, uh, just an overall question. Uh, of course, Belinda had been living um, you know, a risky lifestyle for a while, but during that summer of 1996, did it seem to you there was any big difference in her, or was it just she was just continuing to do the same thing, or was there maybe a heightened sense of, Man, I'm really worried about her even more than usual. How would you explain the summer of 1996 and, and maybe your and other people's attitude toward Belinda? 
she was scared. She would, um, because I spent a week with her before I, that the week, two weeks before she disappeared. Okay. And I spent a week with her and I was going and doing things that she was doing. And she scared me to death one night. And uh, she made me get in the car with somebody that I wasn't sure about. And uh, so I made the man stop and let me out of the car. And she went and, and did her thing with this person. But it, it, it was almost like she would have jumped in anybody's car for anything, you know? Well, okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, that, that, that probably is, is as complete a picture as maybe we need to know. And once again, she went missing on June 21st. So you're saying a couple weeks before. So like June 7th, that could have happened. Yep. Something like that. Okay. Yep. All right. Now, let me ask you about yourself. Now, uh, we're going to talk about how you were actually in Hawaii, of all places, when Belinda went missing. What was the circumstances of you um, being in Hawaii? Did you go there for vacation? What were you doing there? I was getting clean. Oh, you were? I was getting clean or I would have been dead, and that's how I felt. And I begged mm. my sister to get me out of, out of town. And, mm. um, and so my sister, Sandy... And we're really close. And uh, she said, Robin, I'm buying you a ticket right now. Come on, let's go. So I, I that's what I did. I, uh, the week, I spent a week with Belinda, and that was enough for me, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it was plenty enough for me. Okay. And that's just, you know, that wasn't my life, you know? Yeah. And I did not not enjoy what she was doing at all. And... Uh, I just, I couldn't, I couldn't do it no more. So I left, and then I was there. I found out my grandma died on uh, the 17th of June, I think it was. Hmm. And um, then Berlin, the police called us, my sister and I, and in Hawaii, and said that Belinda disappeared. Wow. And that was the day after she disappeared. Um, how long did you stay in Hawaii? I was there for a year exactly. Wow. And did yeah. it help? It helped it a lot. Okay. It helped. I've got a good husband now, a great mm. life. Yeah, you do. Yes. Yeah, uh, you, the listeners should know that Robin has sent me pictures of her Christmas uh, display <laughs> outside her house. Impressive is a word that I will use. In fact, uh, maybe I'll, I'll show the listeners a couple pictures that you sent me. Maybe they'll have seen them um, before this episode comes out to show uh, them, uh, so we can show them your skills at Christmas decorations. Like I said, very impressive, Robin. Thank uh, you very much. You're very welcome. So let's move now to June 21st, 1996. We realize you were now, we now realize that you were in Hawaii, so you were not there. And in fact, you stayed there for a while. You did not come back to Western Pennsylvania after Belinda's disappearance. Hearing what was, was going on with you, I think everybody understands that. But what do you know, what have you learned from, I guess, other people about that day, June 21st? What did Belinda do that day? And then that night, what does Keith say that Belinda did? Well, I heard that uh, from the police in Arnold that they, uh, that she went out to Orby's bar to go get some more beer. And uh, mm -hmm. she made it to Orby's bar that I know of, mm -hmm. that I the people, the police didn't give us any names or anything who they interviewed okay. that they saw. Uh, but the bartender, I know for sure, was one that saw her there to get the beer. Then she walked back up to 4th Avenue Bar and stopped in there for a second. What Keith is saying is that they're at home, and then late that night, um, they're out of beer. So he sends Belinda down the street to Orpies. How long of a walk would you say that is? A uh, five-minute walk. Not far. Okay. And then there are witnesses who said that she was there. Yes. Okay. And then from there, she, though, went to another bar, seemingly. On her way back to her apartment. Okay. And uh, how, how round trip, how long would this entire walk take, going from where she was living to Orpies to this other bar and back to her place? How long would a walk like that take, just roughly? Okay. Please say that again. 15 minutes at the most. 15 minutes. Okay. But as we know, she did uh, not come back. 
we know that now. Um, so she doesn't come back. Does Keith do anything? I don't know. I wasn't there, but um, from what the, the police report says, that yes, he ended up uh, calling the police and telling him mm -hmm. them that he never came back home. Mm -hmm. So, w in your opinion, then, once again, I realize you weren't there, but you, you got this information from the police. Would you say that Keith filed the missing persons report in a timely manner? I think so. Okay, like, you know, she doesn't come back, but once again, given her lifestyle, maybe that's not so unusual. But the very, like, eight hours later, he did file a missing persons report. He did. Okay. All right. Um, but then that, please. Next day, the next day, he had somebody else living at their house. Mm -hmm. We're, we're going to, yes, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to get to that. I'm going to ask you about that in a bit. Don't worry about that. We're going to, I'm going to certainly talk about that so the listeners can know. But I, I want to ask you now, Robin, is how did, uh, your family, of course, you're in Hawaii. You already said somebody let you know that she was missing. How did your family in Western Pennsylvania find out that Belinda was missing? Do you know? The police. Okay. Just by the police. But, um, like, again, my mother didn't care about any of us. Um, mm -hmm. So it was, that was here nor there. So she wouldn't let my dad even, because uh, they ended up moving out of town the same time also. Uh, mm -hmm. They were lived in our home that we grew up in for 33 years. And that same month, my grandma died, Belinda disappeared, my mother moved, and Lori went to Arizona. So that, that all happened, mm -hmm. in the, and I went to Hawaii. So it was like our whole family was wow. gone. Wow. You think yeah. that was just all like a coincidence, everybody moving out at the same time, just a coincidence? Yes, it was because it was not planned yeah. at all. Everybody just got sick of the uh, New Ken, Arnold, Lowerboro area. Yes. Okay. Yep. All right. Uh, so the way you believe your the your local family found out was the police call them, of course, uh, just to put it in the timeline. She goes missing. Hours later, she doesn't come back. Keith files a police report. Then the police, maybe Keith tells them, you know what, she has family that lives in the area, gives them a phone number. The police call somebody in your family, and that, that's how you eventually find out. Exactly. All right. And who called you to tell you in Hawaii that, that she was missing? Who called you? The police department they did themselves yes wow well that's interesting yes. well, that doesn't usually happen okay so that that's interesting that they would call you the whole way in hawaii okay in your opinion what of course once again you were not there but in your opinion at the time does it seem like the police took belinda's uh disappearance seriously despite them surely knowing the activities she was involved in, what would you say? As far as I know that they took the dogs out that same week and tried to find her, or mm -hmm. they, uh, I, they did try to do some things, but it was like not enough for, uh, and if anybody would disappear, you know, mm -hmm. uh, I don't think it was quite enough on my end. Okay. I mean, there isn't much information about what happened, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, for 10 years, I called Montel Williams' show to find out that, uh, for a psychic to help me, you know? And I, I mean, it's just like nobody cared, you know? Mm -hmm. Nobody cared. Do you think the reason that is is because of what Belinda was doing? Probably. Uh, maybe, um, maybe just to draw a different example, if she had have been a, a college professor, professor with her doctorate, do you think the police would have looked at it differently? Yes, most okay. definitely. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about more about those places uh, you've mentioned, Orpies and this other bar. So y your understanding is people did see her at either of those places that night? Yes. All right, so then I guess we could believe that uh, Keith was uh, telling the truth. This was not something that he was uh, just making up. Um, did any, once again, to your knowledge, did any of them say, well, yeah, I, we saw her leave with a certain guy, a description, anything like that? No. Nothing like that. No, 
Not to my knowledge. I didn't okay. hear anything. Okay. And we should note that we're talking about the early morning hours, like 1 o'clock in the morning, 1.30 a.m., something like that. Yes. Okay. All right. Now, you did tell me, and this is a park that I've been to many times, although not recently because I lived in western Pennsylvania for uh, 23 years now, but I used to go to North Moreland Park all the time. There were searches done there. Yes, there are. Okay. Do you happen to know uh, what reasons uh, they had to even look in that area? I mean, or North Moreland Park is not near uh, Orpies. It's several miles away, although it's technically in the general area, but it's out, you know, uh, not in the middle of town. Um, no. do, you, do you have any idea why they chose to look out there? Uh, because of uh, somebody mentioned that that's where maybe they dumped her at. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's the, that's the best they had to go on, the, to your knowledge. Yes. Okay. All right. So they went and looked at North Portland Park. Of course, we know that uh, nothing was found there, nothing, uh, you know, no remains or anything that could be connected to uh, Belinda at all. But North Portland Park is a pretty big park. Uh, so Correct. It, it's, it's a pretty big park. And... Um, all right, so let's move on. Uh, we've already talked about these witnesses at Orpies and Elsewhere that said that uh, Belinda was there. They do remember her, although it doesn't seem after that they're very helpful. Of, you know, did they know that she was going home? Did she get picked up by somebody? We just don't know. But given what she was doing with her life, uh, it would not be hard to believe that she might have gone off with somebody. Um, let's go back to the coil murder just for a few moments, uh, maybe to just go into it a little deeper. Um, how close, once again, your understanding of the area, how close, uh, where Belinda was living at the time, how close did she and Keith live to Stephanie Coyle where she lived and this murder occurred? Do you know? Around two blocks away. Pretty close. Yeah. Pretty close. And when Belinda spoke to you about seeing something, in what context was it? Was she was she standing over there? Was she walking by? What you know? What did she I, say? Do you know? I no, I don't know that. Okay. No, all I know is that she said she saw the people walking onto the house, mm. or the person walking onto the house. Okay. Now, remember, this is twenty five years uh, ago. So I got you. You just do your best you can. That's fine. Totally fine, Robin. You just do the best you can. I, I realized, and as you stated, Stephanie Coyle's murder wasn't even on your radar in 1993. So I, I, I understand. But I, I'm just, you know, what she said. Uh, is, your, is your impression then when it happened in 1993, did she go and talk to the police? Or was 1996 the first time she was going to ever speak to them? Do you know? I think she, I think she already, from what... Um uh, uh, Chief of Police Willie Weber said at the time, uh, he said that she was going. She already told him, and they met in the alley, and they were talking about it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it, at least at the time in 1993, she did say something to someone about it. Yes. This was, I, I guess, what I'm saying is in contrast to her just kind of creating this out of thin air in 1996. Wasn't it? Wasn't I? Don't think it was uh, something Belinda made up. Okay. You know, okay. Belinda wasn't like, you know. Okay, gotcha. Now the listeners should know, though, that a couple people, different men, have been named over the years as being uh, pretty good suspects um, yeah. for Stephanie's murder. Although the tough part is, I don't think that these two guys knew each other. So I guess we'd have to pick one. They didn't do this together, or it could be somebody totally different. But one guy's name is, and these are public names. I'm not revealing any secrets here. Uh, one of them is John Sharpless, and another guy's name is Robert Boring. And to your knowledge, did Belinda know either of these men? I have no, no recollection of no, that at all. No idea. And in fact, when you spoke to her about going to the police, did she ever mention any names at all? Not to me, no. Okay. All right, so, and once again, these men have been looked at over the last 28 years, but nothing has uh, happened. In fact, I think maybe they even went to court or something like that, but 
neither of these men, if they did it, uh, have ever answered for uh, Stephanie's murder. Okay. So we have this, and of course we, you know, I, I guess we could, we don't theorize, but if Belinda, you know, if we suspect that Belinda's telling the truth about seeing something, and if one of these guys knew that she knew something and was thinking about talking, then, you know, we could think about that being a, maybe a, a cause for this disappearance. That might be something all of you listeners are going to think about. Let's move on to this. Of course, of course Keith, he's the guy that said that she walked out. And never came back. On the other hand, he did file a police uh, report in a fairly timely manner. Do you know at the time if where they were living was searched? Was there like a backyard or a basement? Anything weird found to your knowledge? Uh, yes, there was a search. They said they had the cadaver dogs out um, and in the house and everything a couple times, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And nothing uh, of any note was found? No. Okay. They said they found a couple of specks of blood in the apartment, but there mm. wasn't big enough to do any DNA on it at that time. Mm. Okay. Maybe that wouldn't be unusual, being that Belinda lived there. Right. If it was, if it was even hers. Okay. Exactly. So, they, so they did that, went in there, they... It, and uh, nothing, of course, was found, but we know sometimes searches of property uh, miss things as uh, a disappearance we covered a few years ago, Zoe Campuses, where they searched a house once, found nothing, and then years later, they searched the same house and yard and found her remains, so that does happen. Uh, maybe most importantly, did Keith and Belinda have a car? They did not. Jo- All right, so... If something did happen, then how, you know, where could they have gone if uh, if Keith did do something to Belinda, let's say, how would he have taken her away from there without a vehicle? It's a little hard to, uh, question to answer, but just wanted everybody to know about that. Now, you've already mentioned this uh, earlier in the conversation, but we're going to talk about this now. You know, the tough part about this disappearance is right after Belinda went missing, within days, Keith already had another woman move in with him. Is that right? That is correct. Uh, how did you and your family find out about that? Do you remember? By the, the police just told me this not too long ago. Um, well, no, the first time that I talked to the police mm-hmm. when I came back home, mm-hmm. that they said that they... A lady moved into the house and got rid of her uh, belongings, her clothes, everything, and canceled her welfare. Huh. Do yes. you, uh, we're not going to get into this woman's name, but had you ever heard this woman's uh, name before? Is this a uh, woman that Belinda knew? I don't know that. Okay. I we- don't know that. I didn't know the girl myself. Okay. Do you believe that this woman was engaged in the same activities that Belinda was? More than likely. Okay. All right. So here's on one hand. So just to paint this picture for the listeners, on one hand, Keith uh, and Belinda know each other for all these years. He says that she goes out <coughs> and uh, is going out for beer. She doesn't come back. His story. But he does file a missing persons report in somewhat of a timely manner. But then, on the other hand, uh, within days, you know, within a week, in fact, I think it was just within 48 to 72 hours, some other woman is moving in where Belinda lived. Yes. Huh. Yep. Do you, um, do you know if the police ever spoke to this woman uh, about Belinda's disappearance? I don't know, but I think they had. I I, I think that's what the author told me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we, you know this. We're not going to mention the woman's name on this uh, program, but you know this woman's name. You know who she is. Yes. Mm-hmm. Have you ever spoken to her? No. Ever talked to her? No. No. Okay. Has anybody else in your family ever talked to her? No. Okay. Do My you... sister... Please. It was close... My sister Lori, that was close with Belinda, uh, she's passed away now. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Do you happen to know if this woman and Keith, uh, are they still a couple? Are they still living together? Or have they gone their separate ways? Do you even know? 
Yes, they go on their separate ways. Okay. Do you even know how long they uh, she continued to live there? No, I do not. No. Okay. No. All right. So this. Please. Because when I came back from Hawaii, uh, just got off the plane and we stopped in Pittsburgh at the point, and we're walking underneath the bridge at the point, and um, uh, I hear this person calling my name. And he kept calling and calling, and I'm looking over, and I'm like, who in the heck? Nobody even knows I'm back. Mm. You know, I mean, one person knew I was coming back. And uh, I'm like, come with me, and let's see who this person is. Here, it was Keith. And I said, what the mm. heck did you do with my <laughs> Yeah, I said, you've lost 100, 100 pounds or more. You look horrible. And uh, I mean, it wasn't even the same person that I knew when I left, you know? And he said, Bina was my heart. Uh, and that's what they called her. Mm. A lot of people call her Bina. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and he said, Bina was my heart. I would never hurt her. Never done nothing with her. Okay. I said, and I walked away. So just coincidentally, down in the point is down uh, where the Mongahela and the Allegheny come together to, be, to form the Ohio River in downtown Pittsburgh. So you're down there after uh, a year after... Uh, Belinda goes missing, and you just happened to run into Keith at the point. Yes. What, what yeah. was he doing down there? I don't ask. I don't know. Um, I didn't. And I guess that's where he might have been living at the time. I, I think. Mm -hmm. But uh, of all people, that's who I ran into. Yep. That is a heck of a story. Wow. Yeah. Um, do, to your knowledge, maybe that day or any other day after that, has Keith ever offer, ever offered up his own theory as to what happened to Belinda? For example, has he ever told the police what he thought happened and the police passed that on along to you? No, I don't. I haven't seen him or heard from him mm -hmm. since. Okay. Nope. All right. So we have no idea, even though Keith did file the missing persons report. He has never is never gotten back to you. Let's just say through the grapevine, as to what happened, what his opinion was, and what happened to Belinda. Yes. He, for example, he's never said, "Well, I think she went to pick up beer and then she went off with some guy." No, nope, yeah. never said a word about anything. Okay. Uh, and I'm guessing that Keith, over the years, has a criminal record. Yes. Okay. Yes, okay. he does. He was. Offered uh, killing a person down in the Bachelors Club, and that's all public. Yes. Say that again. Why don't you say that again, Robin? He was charged for murder for a man they beat with a baseball bat at the Bachelors Club in New Kensington. Wow. How long ago was that? Was that before Belinda went missing? Yes. It was. That was before they got together, I think, um, uh -huh. back in the. Early night, I don't even know, 70s, 80s, okay. somewhere around there. Okay. All right. So that is, did he ever serve any time for that? Yes. He did. Yes. Okay. I will, I will uh, certainly look that up. I'm not sure if I was aware of that before we did this interview, but I will surely look that up. Okay. Uh, looking back at it now, uh, uh, you know, being that, um, once again, you're living your own life. She's doing what she was doing. Of course, you went to Hawaii to get away from this. But we understand that she was closer to one of your other sisters than to you. Did it ever come up after she went missing that one of your other sisters, you know, in talking to them said, you know what, she did tell me that, you know, she was having problems with one of the guys that was a customer of hers anything like that no never you know she ever said you know i think i'm being stalked by one of these guys that i met no Nothing. no okay and belinda used to have regular people that all mm -hmm. the time um, okay. like they came all the time you know the okay. same people okay you know it wasn't like very seldom i mean like uh I don't know because I wasn't around much, mm -hmm. but um, yeah, she uh, she had a lot of the same customers come every every day, okay. you know. Yeah. How would you explain the past twenty five years? I, I have to admit, Robin, it sounds like at least early on, you know, maybe through two thousand, you were struggling with your own, 
you know, issues, and I'm, I'm certainly happy that you got the, them all straightened out, a absolutely. But, you know, overall, in the last 25 years, how tough has it been? It's been tough. Um, it's been real tough. I mean, not knowing is the worst, because even if we found the remains, we'd know something, you know? And then we'd yeah. find out really what happened to her, even if, you know, something, you mm. know? But it, it's not been easy, you know? I mean, every time a body shows up in the river or along the hillside or whatever, and he remains are found, I'm calling the coroner's office to see if it's her, you know? Mm. So it's, it's a constant, constant uh, reminder because I have no idea where she's at, you know? Do you think that when Belinda was doing this, do you think that she understood the, the risks in doing it, you know, going out, meeting strangers, for sex, uh, did she understand that? Do you think that she did this? Was she? I mean, did Keith force her into this, or was she doing this by choice? How do you all now that it's been twenty five years? How do you look back at that now? I think at first it might have been something that they had to do to to survive, mm -hmm. you know, and that's what she did to survive. That's mm -hmm. exactly what she did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because he didn't never go get a job, not once that I know of. Uh, but back at that time, do you ever think that he was forcing her into it? Or yeah? No. No? No. Okay. They just uh, were satisfied with the way things were, they were what they were doing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, right. Uh, how have uh, you said, already said one of your uh, sisters uh, is deceased. How has this affected your other siblings? You said you had some brothers, too. Well, my oldest brother, he's now gone also. Oh, and my other brother, uh, Belinda, really didn't get, uh, they weren't close at all. Mm -hmm. um, and the only ones left is Sandy and I. And, um, mm -hmm. it, I mean, Sandy, Sandy doesn't bother with nobody. Um, her and I uh, spend a lot of time together now. Mm -hmm. I mean, we do spend a lot of time together. Yeah. She's here all me. And, um... And she'll be here, well, she was here the other day, and they had to go back home, but she lives up um, in Pine Tuning, and she's lived up there ever since she's, because Sandy lived in Hawaii for 23 years, wow. and uh, and she came home, and uh, she's still up in Pine Tuning, where my parents left the house, where we grew mm -hmm. up in, and live up in Pine Tuning, but my dad is also gone now, too, so, yeah. yeah. So it's okay. just my mother up there and Sandy, and my mother doesn't even acknowledge that Sandy exists. Wow. You know, none of us. Yeah, none I'm of sorry her grandchildren. To hear that. Yeah. My mother was for my mother, and that was all. You know? Okay. Yeah. That's quite a change for your uh, sister Sandy going from Hawaii, and I know the Pine Matuming area. That's quite a change from Hawaii to Pine Matuming. Yeah, it would be a big change. <laughs> I'd, say, I'd say so, for sure. Okay, I, I understand. And I, we you know, can appreciate the, the last 25 years. Very, uh, very difficult. Um, and, uh, you know, the not knowing, as you stated, it's a, it's a topic uh, that came up, I think, on the first episode I ever did of Unfound over five years ago, and it still comes up today. It's one of the most common topics that a guest mentions is that not knowing, you know, suspecting maybe that the person isn't with us anymore, whether it was foul play or an accident or something else, but the just not knowing why that is. It's always it's the top. It's the artist. Yeah. It was. Yeah. Do, yeah. You have a, do you have a website, Facebook page, anybody have something set up for you regarding Belinda's disappearance, Robin? No, I, there's uh, something on um, I, the missing people. There's something about her on that. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't remember what it is, but I once in a while I'll go and check it out. Mm -hmm. Well, but she is listed, I know, on the NamUs database, which is a federal database, NamUs.gov. And okay. then I know that she's also mis listed on the Charlie Project uh, site oh, okay. run by my friend Megan. So she's listed there too, but no official Facebook page, anything like that. No. Okay. Well, maybe, no. maybe uh, you know, being that, um, and the listeners should know that uh, I was introduced to Robin by a woman, Tracy, who is a missing persons advocate in western Pennsylvania. 
And uh, it's really kind of weird, too, that one of her good friends is a guy I went to high school with. It's a lot of uh, connections to me, uh, my prior life in Pennsylvania in this particular disappearance. But maybe if you get together with Tracy, you could get a Facebook page, so, something set up. You know, that okay. might. I think that would, I would recommend that. I mean, you don't have to. It's a little bit of work. But right. it's something that if you don't feel comfortable, do that. If you don't maybe have the knowledge or the time, maybe you talk to Tracy about it and maybe you two can work on it together or something. Okay, that sounds good. Uh, Robin, any final words before we complete this interview? If anybody knows anything, just let somebody know. Me, anybody. You know, that's mm -hmm. all. Okay. Robin, uh, we'll continue to talk. Uh, until Belinda is found, uh, you, I, you know, we'll, I will be here. Uh, anything that you need, uh, for just even a person to talk to, and it's always good to speak to somebody from Western Pennsylvania, anyway. And uh, and I appreciate you being on this episode of Unfound. I thank you for having me. You're welcome. And that was my December fourteenth. 2021 interview with Robin Antonica, sister of Belinda Blainer. I thank her for joining me and all of you on this episode. By the way, how small of a world is it? I went to college with Robin's husband's niece. Crazy. I even remembered the young woman's first name, although we left it out of the interview. I went back and counted how many missing women we featured on Unfound who were involved with work connected to sex, either real or simulated, either legally through stripping or illegally through prostitution. I started at the beginning of Unfound's existence, September 2016. I stopped counting at five and that was only going up to halfway through 2019. So I am sure there are more. Frankly, I was surprised it was that many. However, as I stated in the summary, there does not seem to be a lot of consistency to their disappearances. For example, with Megan Lancaster, she was certainly involved in prostitution. She had that book to prove it. Yet, there is no evidence to suggest Megan disappeared due to meeting men for sex. On the other hand, and on the whole far other side of the spectrum, we have Jesse Foster, who was certainly sex trafficked from Canada to Las Vegas, who was pushed onto the streets of that city to solicit men. She even got a broken jaw in the process. And she was almost certainly murdered by the people who forced her to do what she was doing. And the others Unfound has covered fall into the range between Megan's and Jesse's. So, how can we use this information to analyze Belinda's? It's a tough question to answer. There is, of course, Keith. He seems like the perfect suspect. He had a violent history before meeting Belinda. According to police, he moved in another woman shortly after Belinda went missing. And despite the witnesses, Keith's story does have a kind of the man said type of feel to it. Yet, Keith did file a missing persons report something I don't think any of the other men in these other similar types of disappearances did. If he harmed Belinda, then how did he get rid of her body without a car? Remember, police did search the apartment. And to talk about them again, those people at the bars who saw Belinda. Sure, you know how I hate eyewitnesses. However, that's usually when they aren't interviewed until days, if not weeks, later. Whereas it sounds to me like these bar patrons and employees talked to police within 24 hours. Hard to believe they'd get the date wrong. Although, 
they could be telling the truth and Keith could have murdered Belinda if she actually did arrive home after going to the bars. All of you will have to gauge these pluses and minuses for yourself. For me, what I'm pretty sure did not have anything to do with Belinda's disappearance is the Stephanie Coyle murder. Why? I look at it this way. If Belinda was walking by Stephanie's when the killer came out, the guy would have been covered in blood. Why? Because Stephanie was stabbed multiple times, and there would have been no way to clean up. No way. Meaning if Belinda saw this man, should she not have known something was up? Should she not have called police right away? Even though she did what she did for a living? Even though she had a drug addiction? You would think so. But it doesn't sound like that at all. Belinda never mentioned the description of the guy. She didn't mention seeing blood on him. And really, she wasn't talking about it until three years later. What I'm saying is, if Belinda saw what she said she saw in 1993, then why was the murder still unsolved in 1996? Yep, these are tough questions to answer. But this is what we run into every day in the missing persons community. Hey, it's a rough town too. I'll leave the theorizing up to you. And that's the program. If you found it informative, please go to the app that you used to listen to Unfound and give this podcast a nice review. I thank you for listening. I'm Ed Densel. And you've been listening to Unfound.